Welcome to part 2 of high capacity lead acid batteries. In this video, I'd like to cover all the different names that's used to describe the exact same battery, as well as how construction of the battery will affect how you're going to use it. In part 1, we took a look at how to select your battery depending on the application you're going to use it for. When you're doing your internet search for a battery, you'll be bombarded by a lot of different names, none of which will give you a clue as to what kind of battery they're talking about. So let's take a look at some of these names. Starting with the automotive category, you'll see it called the SLI battery. This stands for starting, lighting, and ignition. You can also see it called a cranking battery. Moving over to the deep cycle battery, you'll find a virtual plethora of names. This is because vendors are trying very desperately to pull in specific groups of people to buy their batteries. You'll find them called PV or solar electric, boathouse, golf cart, industrial, float service, traction, RV, forklift, stationary. The list actually goes on, I just ran out of room. And finally, marine deep cycle is sometimes called the dual purpose or hybrid battery. Let's move on to battery construction. The traditional and most common construction technique is called flooded or wet cell. The flooded wet cell battery has two subcategories. You have the standard or serviceable, which means the battery has removable caps. This allows you to replace any electrolytes that may boil off while you're charging. The other subcategory is called maintenance-free. Maintenance-free is a secret term. It actually means the battery dies as soon as the warranty is over. Anyway, you'll notice there are no caps. This means there is no access if you need to service the electrolytes in that battery. Flooded wet cell batteries are used in automotive, marine, as well as deep cycle applications. Hmm... Now wait a minute, you may be confused. I just said in part one, never use an automotive battery as a deep cycle. But here in part two, I say a flooded wet cell can be used in both applications. Well, let me clarify. As the name implies, all three batteries are actually flooded with sulfuric acid. They do have this in common. What is different, however, is the metal plates inside of the batteries. The automotive battery has a large number of thin, spongy lead plates. This means there's a lot of metal touching the sulfuric acid. The result? A high current for a short period of time. Now the deep cycle battery, they have thick, solid lead plates. So there's considerably less metal to acid contact. The result? Less current over a longer period of time. The marine deep cycle battery? It's actually a coarse, spongy lead plate. So it has more metal to acid contact than a deep cycle, but not nearly as much as an automotive. Current output is somewhere in between the two. Wow, let's boil this all down. The construction characteristic states will have metal plates submerged in sulfuric acid. But the type and thickness of those metal plates will be determined by your application characteristic. This is why I said in part one, batteries are defined by their application and their construction. If you're asking yourself, is flooded wet cell the only type of construction? Well, the answer is no. There are other types of constructions. The flooded wet cell battery does have some issues. You know, things like it has to be stored straight up and down. Oh, there's also the possibility of the battery producing a gas which is both corrosive and explosive during charging. So you have to carefully pick the storage location of your batteries. To overcome some of these problems, two other batteries were invented. The AGM battery, or absorbed glass mat, as well as the gel cell battery. In the AGM battery, the acid is actually suspended within glass mats. This solves many problems that the wet cell batteries have. For example, the AGM battery is actually maintenance free. You can mount it in any position except upside down. The charging voltage for most AGM batteries is exactly the same as wet cell, so they're interchangeable. They won't spill any acid or vent gas while they're charging, which means you can use them in a confined space or even indoors. They have a low self-discharge rate. I'll explain low self-discharge in another video. Basically what this means is, even a battery not being used will eventually die. Battery charging is much more efficient. It can be charged at 100% of the battery capacity, where wet cells are usually limited to about a quarter of their capacity. Some downsides of the AGM. AGM usually costs at least twice as much, if not more, than a wet cell battery. And if you're looking for a really large amp hour battery, there's sparse availability above 150 amp hours. Other names you'll find for AGM batteries is dry cell, non-spillable, sealed regulated valve, and valve regulated lead acid battery, usually written as the acronym VRLA. 
The other type of battery construction is the gel cell. Many sites on the internet say this battery is becoming very hard to find, but I'll cover it anyway. Its main purpose is for very deep cycle applications. It tends to last longer in hot weather applications. This is important because batteries are very temperature sensitive. A future video I'll cover this, but hotter weather means a shorter life cycle for the battery. Like the AGM, there's no gassing or leakage. And it also has a low self-discharge rate, meaning it has a longer shelf life. So why is this battery falling out of favor? It may be because this battery requires special charging procedures. It's not interchangeable with other types of batteries. This requires special design considerations. Okay, what application can each of these battery types be used in? We've already covered the flooded wet cell battery can be used in all three applications. As it turns out, the AGM as well can be used in all three applications. Our problem child, the gel cell, normally only used for deep cycle. Then don't forget, you can't pull out a flooded or an AGM and just replace it with a gel cell. You have to redesign. Well, that's it for part two. Please join me in part three where I discuss how all the different battery ratings are interpreted. Thanks for watching.